Hello everyone. Welcome to our group Learn with PKT. Today we are going to study geography. The book which I am referring here is of Goel Brothers Prakashan and the name of the author is Veena Bhargava. This is a textbook of ICSC geography of standard 9. We have already studied the first two chapters namely chapter 1 earth as a planet and chapter 2 latitudes and longitudes and today we are going to study the third and the final chapter of the first unit that is rotation and revolution so let's begin the apparent movement of the sun moon stars and other celestial bodies gives us an impression that all these bodies are moving while we are stationary actually we little realize that it is the earth that is constantly on the move we do not feel the rotation because we are also moving along with the earth at the same speed in fact all the heavenly bodies are constantly in motion but they are held together in space because of the gravitational force of one with respect to each other The earth's gravitational force holds the moon and the artificial satellites in their rotational paths or orbits. The movements of the earth. The primary movements of the earth are rotation and revolution. Rotation is when the earth rotates around its own axis from west to east once in 24 hours. This movement causes day and night. revolution it is the earth revolves around the sun making one complete revolution in approximately 365 and 1/4 days since earth is the only planet with life on it all these movements of the earth affects the types of plants and animals inhabiting the earth because of the varying amount of sun's heat reaching the various parts of the earth due to the earth's spherical shape and inclination of the axis the amount of insulation otherwise known as the incoming solar radiation varies from place to place since temperature is the basis of climate vegetation and atmospheric changes it greatly affects the variety of life on earth let's now come to the first part of this chapter that is rotation the length of the day and night is directly related to the earth's rotation while rotating a part of the earth facing the sun has day and the other part has night circle of illumination is the imaginary line which shows clear demarcation between the phenomena of day and night on the earth so the spinning of the earth on its polar axis is termed as rotation the period of rotation or the time required for the earth to turn through 360 degrees is 23 hours 56 minutes 4.09 seconds this period is termed as the sidereal day and is determined by the stars now let's talk about the effects of the speed of rotation firstly all the moving bodies on the earth's surface that is ocean currents and winds are deflected towards the right in the northern hemisphere and left in the southern hemisphere due to coriolis force created because of the rotation of the earth this is called farrell's law secondly the cyclones and the anti cyclones are also deflected in both the hemispheres causing atmospheric changes finally it affects the pressure belts and the movement of the air on the earth's surface the bulging of the air at the equator and the flattening at the poles takes place due to different speed of rotation let us now discuss the effects of rotation first point is rotation causes day and night secondly the variation in temperature is also due to this rotation third is the apparent movement of the celestial bodies is the evidence of earth's rotation for example you can take 
द सन द सन एक्चुअली इज स्टेशनरी बट ड्यू टू द रोटेशन ऑफ द अर्थ इट एपियर्स दैट द सन इज मूविंग द सेम इज द केस विद द ट्रीज actually while we are sitting in a in a moving train the trees and the houses appear to move at a fast speed whereas actually they are stationary and we are moving with the moving train thus the rotation of the earth from west to east determines the direction in which the sun the moon and the stars appear to rise and set the fourth point is that If one person drops a stone from top of a multi-story building, it will fall slightly towards the east. The fifth one is that the rotation of the Earth creates a centrifugal force, just like a spinning top, and causes a bulge at the equator. Lastly, the alternate rise and fall in the ocean waves occurs twice in twenty-four hours due to rotation. right now let's discuss the two effects or forces which we have used the first one is the coriolis effect and the second one is the centrifugal force the coriolis effect it was first described in 1835 by a french scientist by the name gustave coriolis as per his theory all the moving bodies like the oceans in the northern hemisphere are deflected towards the right in the northern hemisphere and towards the left in the southern hemisphere because of the coriolis force which is called the coriolis effect or the farrell's law it occurs due to the centrifugal force it is because of the rotation of the earth and difference in the speed as we go towards the poles as latitude increases and the speed of the earth's rotation decreases the coriolis effect increases it is absent at the equator but it increases as we go towards the poles the centrifugal force centrifugal force is a force directed away from the axis of rotation and appears to act on all rotating objects around an axis therefore as the earth rotates about its axis it experiences a centrifugal force directed away from its axis of rotation just like a spinning top and causes a bulge at the equator it balances the force that is responsible for its rotation called the centripetal force let's now come to the second part of the chapter that is the revolution the motion of the earth along its elliptical orbit around the sun is approximately 365 1 by 4 days and it is termed as revolution the period of revolution or year is the time required for the earth to complete one circle around the sun every 4 years the extra 1/4 day difference between the tropical year and the calendar year of 365 days is taken as one whole day and this is added to the month of february in every four years hence every four years it is a leap year do you know the mean distance between the earth and the sun is about 150 million kilometers the earth is said to be in perihelion on 3rd january when the distance is the least or about 147 million kilometers on july 4th the earth is at its farthest point from the sun and it's said to be in an aphelion at a distance of 152 million kilometers these differences in the distance do cause some difference in the amount of sun's energy received by the earth the mean velocity of the speed of the earth is about 1 lakh 7000 kilometers per hour or 30 kilometers per second but varies according to the path of the orbit occupied the velocity is the greatest at perihelion and the least at aphelion the earth spins on an imaginary line called axis 
the north of this line is called the north pole and the south of this axis is called the south pole the earth rotates on this axis but it is not at right angle to the plane of the revolution it makes an angle of 66 and a half degrees with the plane of ecliptic and is tilted 23 and a half degrees from the line perpendicular to that plane two points must be kept in mind the earth's axis keeps a fixed angle with the plane of the ecliptic and secondly the axis always points to the same direction during the period of its revolution dear learners do you know what are the effects of the inclination of the axis the alteration of the seasons the inclination of the axis has important consequences because of its tilted position each pole is inclined alternatively towards the sun twice a year when it is summer in the northern hemisphere it is inclined towards the sun and the south pole is away hence southern hemisphere experiences winter similarly during winter the north pole is away from the sun and the south pole is inclined towards it hence it is summer in the southern hemisphere if the axis were perpendicular to the place of the ecliptic every place on the earth's surface would have had 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night and there would be no seasons the earth completes one revolution on its elliptical orbit in 365 one by four days because of the inclination of the axis and the fact that its north pole is always directed to the pole star the earth experiences variation in temperature and in the length of the day and night which affects the main season throughout the year now let's talk about the effects of revolution the earth's revolution round the sun with its axis inclined at 66 and a half degrees to the plane of the ecliptic changes in the apparent altitude of the midday sun the sun is directly overhead at the equator on march 21st and september 22nd though at times it is referred as september 23rd because the year is not exactly 365 days these two days are termed as spring and autumn equinoxes respectively after the spring equinox the sun appears to move north and is directly over at tropic of cancer on june 21st this is termed as summer solstice the northern hemisphere has its longest day and shortest night on june the 21st on december 22nd the sun signs over it on the tropic of capricorn in the southern hemisphere the northern hemisphere has its winter solstice at this time as the earth receives oblique rays of the sun beyond the tropic of cancer thus the tropic of cancer in the northern hemisphere and tropic of capricorn in the southern hemisphere mark the limit of the overhead sun as beyond the tropics the sun never shines vertically at any time of the year the areas beyond the arctic and the antarctic circles are very cold as the winter here lasts for six months hence the darkness and summer is very short as the sun is never overhead the apparent movement of the sun within the tropics varies very little from its vertical position at noon every day hence days and nights are equal throughout the year now let's talk about the varying length of day and night the length of day and night varies according to the seasons while day and night are due to earth's rotation on june 21st the sun is overhead at noon along the tropic of cancer and all parallels in the northern hemisphere have their longest day of the year on 22nd december when the sun is overhead tropic of capricorn the conditions are reversed that is the length of the day increases with increasing latitude in the south of the equator but decreases with the increased latitude north of the equator until there is a continuous night north of the arctic circle on march 21st and september 23rd during equinoxes the circle of illumination coincides with the meridians because the sun is overhead at noon along the equator thus all the places have 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night let's now deal with summer solstice the word solstice in latin means 
the sun standing still or reaching the zenith or the highest point here on june 21st the north pole is inclined towards the sun hence the tropic of cancer receives the direct rays of the sun and the northern hemisphere experiences summer season the summer season applies only to northern hemisphere as the southern hemisphere is experiencing its winter season because south pole is away from the sun the great circle that demarcates the boundary between the sunlit and shadowed halves of the earth is called circle of illumination at the summer solstice it divides all the parallels into unequal parts let's now discuss the special features of summer solstice first one is the duration of the day is longer than night number two daylight lasts for the entire 24 hours beyond the arctic circle towards the north pole thirdly the length of the day increases with increasing latitude north of the equator and lastly at the corresponding latitudes in the north and south of the equator the relative lengths of the day and night are in exact opposite relation the southern hemisphere will experience winter and antarctic prison will be in total darkness winter solstice the conditions at winter solstice on December 22nd are exactly reverse of the summer solstice conditions. At this time, south pole of the axis is inclined directly towards the sun and the southern hemisphere enjoys the same conditions of increased sunshine and the south pole will have continuous daylight for 6 months. Now the special features of the winter solstice. Firstly, the sun shines directly overhead tropic of Capricorn. Hence, the length of the day increases as one goes towards the south pole. Secondly, day is longer in the southern hemisphere than night. And thirdly, between the arctic circle and the north pole, night lasts for entire 24 hours as the entire polar area north of the arctic circle lies in the shaded side of the circle of illumination. Whereas, the south pole has 24 hours of daylight. After summer and winter solstice, let's now discuss equinoxes. On March 21st and September 23rd, vernal or spring and autumnal equinoxes, the relation of the earth to the sun's rays is identical. All places on earth have 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night. As the circle of illumination passes through the poles and thus divides the earth into equal halves. Hence, day and night are of equal length, that is 12 hours each at all latitudes. This explains the word equinox from Latin equus or equal and nox means night. Thank you.